past episodes, I've covered many solutions for full text searching, including Thinking Sphinx, Sunspot, and Elasticsearch, but all of those require an external search engine separate from the database. Now, if you're using Postgres as your database, it includes some great full text search capability, and there are many advantages to keeping your full text searching inside your primary database. I'll give you some reasons here while I show you how it works in this episode. Now, here's the application we'll be working with. I have several article records, and I've already implemented some features such as pagination using Will Paginate, and a simple search form like I show in episode uh, 37, where you just type in a keyword and it finds articles that either have that keyword in the name or the content of the article. Now let me walk you through the source code for this, starting in the view template where I'm listing out the articles, and here is where that simple search form is, and the text just gets submitted as a query parameter to the articles path, which is the articles controller index action, and let's look at that next. Now this is also quite simple. Here I'm fetching the articles by calling article.textSearch, which is a custom class method, which I'll show you in a minute. And I'm just passing the query parameter to this, which is what gets submitted through the form. And then I'm just doing some pagination here by uh, fetching the articles for the given page and only displaying three per page. Now let's take a look at that article model here. Now here's where I'm defining that text search class method where I'm passing in that query parameter. Now if the query is present, I'm going to find all the articles which match that query using a like comparison, or in this case, I like so that it does a case insensitive search. So here we're comparing the article's name and content columns to the query wrapped in percent signs. Now this is really a poor excuse for full text searching and it's a perfect time to take advantage of Postgres's features. One problem with this is that we're comparing the full query string. So if we type in multiple words in our search here, such as Superman character, then we're not going to find any articles even though there are articles containing those two words. It's just that they're not both together. Now changing from a like condition to a full text search is actually quite easy with Postgres. All you have to do is replace your like condition with double at signs like this, and then remove the percent sign from your query string that you're passing in here, like that. So with that simple change, now when we try searching Superman character again, it will find all articles containing both of those words. But it gets better. By default, it's going to use an English dictionary with stemming, so we could say Superman characters, and even though the word characters, plural, isn't in here, it's going to find the word character as well. And it also supports stop words, so it will ignore common words in the English language, such as Superman of DC Comics. Let's search for that, and we found the uh, Superman record even though it doesn't have the word of inside of it. Now one of my favorite reasons for keeping full text searching in the database like this is that it works seamlessly with all other SQL clauses. For example, if I just search for DC Comics alone, that will find all records, and you can see the pagination still works perfectly without any adjustment from us. So this text search method is still just a simple active record scope that we could string any other clauses that we want on here, such as page and per page for doing the pagination. Nothing special going on here. Another reason I love this approach is that everything stays in sync automatically. If I were to create another article or edit one, that new content would be instantly available in the full text search, no delay, and no crazy callback hooks in active record. Well, I hope you can see how powerful full text searching is with Postgres using the double at operator but what's really going on here and how can we get the most out of it? Well, let me show you in the database console. I'm going to run the Rails DB command to start up the database console. Now, whenever I'm experimenting with an operator or function, I like to use the select clause with some static text, such as a Ninja Turtles, and then we'll use the double add operator and search for the word uh, turtles here. Let's try that. And we get a T in response, which stands for true. And searching for a turtle alone works as well because it's using stemming. But searching for something like green obviously doesn't work, so we get false in response. Now there's actually some typecasting going on behind the scenes here. The phrase on the left side of the double at sign is being converted to a TS vector, and we can mimic that by calling the to TS vector function. And the phrase on the right side is being converted to a uh, actually a plain uh, TS query, like this. So just calling that function on either side here will actually do the exact same thing. And this isn't the full story. You can actually pass a dictionary you want to use to the, as a first argument to these functions. So we'll say English, which is going to be the default. And this will actually do the same thing as we had before. 
So you could change the language if you want here, or do a more literal search by passing in simple here instead of English. So let's try that, and now we get false in response because we're typing turtle instead of turtles, and then we get true. So you can see when we're passing in simple, it's not going to do any stemming for the English language. Now you may be wondering the difference between a plain TS query and a regular one. Well, we can try removing the word plain here and just call to TS query, and we'll actually have the same effect here because we have a single word in our query. But if we have a multi-word query, let's say Ninja Turtles here, then we're actually going to get a syntax error because a normal TS query expects there to be Boolean operators between each of the words. So in this case, we can use an ampersand to represent uh, Ninja and Turtles, or a pipe to say uh, Ninja or Turtles, or we can use an exclamation mark to represent not to say Ninja, not Turtles. So if you're going to use a plain 2S query like this, you'll need to translate whatever the user types into the query and add the Boolean operators to it. Now usually, if you're doing full text searching, you'll also want to sort by relevance. And we can do so here using the TS rank function, and that accepts a uh, TS vector. And we'll say Ninja Turtles again. And also a uh, TS query. You can also use a plain query here as well. And I'll say Turtles here, and then close that off. So this will return a float value which we can use to do the ranking. All right, now that we know how to sort by relevance, let's apply this to our application. I'm going to paste in some code into this model to set a rank variable to the TS rank of the name attribute plus the TS rank of the content attribute. And notice I'm sanitizing the query before I insert it into the SQL here. So this means I just have to call order onto here and use that rank variable and use that value in descending order to sort by most relevant. So now when I do a search for, let's say, DC Comics, Instead of displaying Batman first, it's going to display Superman first because that says DC Comics most frequently in it. Now, this text search method is starting to get a little messy, especially if there are more columns that we wanted to search on. So wouldn't it be nice if there was a gem to help us out? Well, this is where the textical gem comes in. I'll have to be more careful when I say that. Uh, this basically makes it easier to do simple full text searching in Postgres. To add this, I will go to the bottom of my gem file and add a gem textical, and then we also need to specify require uh, textical slash rails, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. And then going into our model, we can replace all this code with a simple call to search and then pass in our query. So this will automatically search all text-based columns on this table, so basically doing the same thing that we had before. And we could try this out in our application, searching for Superman, and the search still works, even though the code is now much simpler. And if you check out the log file, you can see the SQL query is basically the same thing we were doing manually using the TS rank to generate the rank and the double at sign to compare a TS vector and a TS query. So Textical is really great for a simple full text search like this, but if you want more customizability, you're better off using another gem called PG Search. So let's take a look at PG Search. This offers a couple of different ways to do full text searching in Postgres. Uh, one option is called Multi Search, which will search multiple models at a single time. The other option is using uh, something called PG Search Scope, which is used for searching a single model. Now I'm going to use PG Search Scope here, so let me show you how it works. First, I'll go into the bottom of my gem file and comment out Textical and add the PG Search gem into here. You'll need to run the bundle command to install it. And then going into my article model, I need to call include PG search, and then I can call PG search scope, and I'll call this scope search, and then tell it what columns to search against by passing the against option. I want to search both the name and the content columns of the article model. So this will generate a method called search, which I'm already calling from here. So with these two lines, it will behave very similar to textical. Now you'll need to restart your Rails app for it to pick up that gem, but once you do, it should have a full text search working like we had before. But it doesn't work exactly like we had before because it doesn't use the English dictionary by default. You can see if I type in the word characters, plural, it's only going to find one article instead of the other articles which have the singular version of the word character. And you can see in the log, it's passing simple in into the TS vector and the TS query instead of the English dictionary. So if you want that old behavior back with PG Search, You'll need to specify the using option and specify T search, and then specify a dictionary and set that to English here. 
And then when we search for characters again, it's going to find all the articles with the word character in it because it's using the English dictionary with stemming. Now one thing I like about PG Search is it makes it easy to search associated attributes. For example, notice an article belongs to an author and it has many comments. So what I can pass in here is an associated uh, against option and specify the author name. And uh, let's also specify the comments uh, name and content columns to search against. So now we can do a search like Clark and now I'll find all articles authored by Clark Kent, even though that is an associated attribute. Another nice thing about PG Search is that you can tell it to ignore accents by passing in the ignoring option and specify accents into there. Now this might not work out of the box. You can see if I reload this page, I get an exception complaining about an unknown function called an accent in the SQL. To fix this, I'll need to add an extension to my Postgres database. So I'm going to do that inside of a migration called add an accent extension, like that. And I'm just going to paste in the code for this migration. Uh, this will just create the accent extension in the up call and drop the extension in the down call. And then I'll run rakedb migrate to create that extension. And there we go, looks like it worked. And now reloading this page, I no longer get that exception. So let's try searching for Superman with an accent, and that finds the single article here, Superman, without the accent. Now there are many other options that PG Search provides, such as the ability to add weights to certain attributes in the relevance ranking. I'll let you check out the documentation for the full details on that. All right, let's shift gears here and focus on performance next. You can see in the log that the query we're performing just takes a couple milliseconds, but I only have a few records in the database. What if we simulate more realistic conditions and add a lot more records? Now inside of my DB seeds file is where I'm generating the initial records for this example application. Now I'm going to alter the seeds file a bit and tell it to do this 1000 times so that we can have a lot more records to work with. Now I normally use a rake task or something for this, but here it'll work fine, just a quick dirty way to get a lot of records in. And then I'll run rake db seed to load in those records. Now I will also go back to my article model and change back to the more manual search using the where clause so that we have a simpler query we can focus on optimizing. And now when I do a search again with all of those records, it does take a noticeably longer amount of time. And if we visit the log, you can see this query took a whole 715 milliseconds to process and Rails's auto explain kicked in and ran explain on that query and gives us the results here. Now the main problem is that it's not using any kind of index for this query, and adding an in index will help us a lot. Now we should add an index to whatever's on the left side of our operator here, so one on the name column and one on the content column. But it's not really good to rely on the auto type casting for this, so I'm going to expand out this query. There we go, now we have a call for 2TS vector on the name and content columns passing in the English dictionary. So this is basically the same thing we were doing before, but this gives us something more concrete that we can add an index for. So I'll generate a new migration for that index and I'll call it add search index to articles, like that. So here I'll just paste in the code for this migration and I'm creating two indexes here, one for the article's name and one for the content. And I'm using that 2TS vector call like I was in the query to generate the index. But notice I'm also passing it into a call to GIN, which is a way to efficiently make an index for full text searching. Now Postgres offers another indexing function called GIST, which you also may want to consider. Check out the documentation for the full details on that, but generally GIN works best for most web applications. All right, so let's migrate the database to add that index. So now we can try performing another search with that new index, and it is noticeably faster, but let's check out the logs. So here you can see that the query is now over twice as fast at 319 milliseconds which is pretty nice, but it's not really the full speed up I was hoping the index would bring. The primary reason for the slowdown is the call to TS rank. Unfortunately, this doesn't take advantage of the index. Uh, let me demonstrate this by using another column to sort by. So let's say uh, just sort by name. And now performing a search is blazing fast. I hardly even see it. The log shows this query only takes five seconds to process. That's more like it. But it would be nice to have some form of relevance ranking, so I'll pass in rank in here again. And one option we could do sort of as a compromise is to not uh, include the content in the relevance ranking, just the name. Uh, this way there will be some relevance, but it won't be full. 
and you can see this search is still very fast. The log shows that it's only 17 milliseconds, so if you find the need to cut corners because of performance, consider taking out the larger columns in the TS rank calls. Now, if someone knows of other performance optimizations we can add to improve this query, please post in the comments for this episode, because I'm not an expert in this area. Now, I want to finish up this episode by talking about the database schema.rb file. This is supposed to be a representation of your full database schema in Ruby, but it is now incomplete. And that's because we've added some migrations using SQL code, which is quite common with Postgres. So this means if we ever try to load in the schema file, such as when we set up our test database, then this will be incomplete. To fix this, go into your application config file and uncomment this line setting the schema format to SQL. And now when we run the migrations, it's going to generate the schema file using SQL instead. So this file is named structure.sql and includes everything you need to regenerate the database. So this means we can remove the uh, schema.rb file. Now, if you ever need to load or dump the schema data, make sure to use the uh, DB structure load or dump tasks and not the schema tasks. Well, that's all for this episode on using Postgres to do full text searching. I recommend it for everyone as a starting point because it's just so convenient to keep it all in SQL. And then if you outgrow it or you find it doesn't quite fit your needs, you can always switch to something that's a more dedicated search engine.